On occasion, uh, a patient may come in and report with, with dizziness. Dizziness is a, is, is a very complex, complex subject. And uh, there can be various causes of dizziness. It could be of a cervical origin or cervicogenic origin. It could be of a vestibular origin. It could be cardiovascular. It could be neurological, metabolic, or even psychiatric. Now, obviously, as manual therapists, we're not really in a, a great position to maybe treat the psychiatric, metabolic, even neurological or cardiovascular elements of it. Some manual therapists will be sort of qualified to, to treat vestibular problems. Uh, others will be uh, able to treat the cervical origin. And the cervical origin could come from such things as trigger points in the upper cervical spine or just the, uh, the joints themselves. It can be benign or it can be sinister. Um, and there are various sort of classifications of it. There are things like vertigo, which could be from benign positional or paramoxin positional vertigo, Menia's disease, labyrinthitis. They're all things that are vestibular mechanisms and neurological mechanisms that can cause dizziness. Uh, there could be some sort of cardiovascular dizziness. The, the very common one is where somebody suddenly gets up and starts feeling dizzy because they have a vasovagal reaction and their blood pressure drops. And then there's also the cervicogenic dizziness because of sort of compromised uh, vert uh, vertebral bacillar arteries. There could be a, a number of things. Equally, we have things like disequilibrium because of visual impairment and, uh, and even panic attacks. But we're not really going to be in a position to sort of help somebody in those as manual therapists unless we're qualified to do uh, vestibular tests. And believe me, you need to be qualified to do those. Uh, I have done the courses on them, very long courses on them. Uh, vestibular vertigo or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo it's not very nice uh, I don't know if anybody from my age has seen The Exorcist but somebody that comes in it really bad and starts projectile vomiting because of it they're suffering uh, so it's something you, you need to know and, you, and know how to do the test to know how to do the treatment because otherwise you can flare people up Having said that, the, one of the more sort of common forms that we can see very often is the uh, um, cervical, cervicogenic involvement. Uh, this could be as a result of sort of certain proprioceptors in the upper cervical spine not working optimally. Uh, that may be a result of uh, trauma or, or traction and damaged joint receptors around the sort of C zero between the, the skull and the uh, and c3 uh, maybe even muscle imbalance of the of the deep neck flexors and these often can respond to sort of manual type physical treatments along with stability exercises of the deep neck flexors um, sometimes stretching of the scalenes the sternocleida mastoid postural re-education sometimes joint mobilization and, and obviously trigger points and uh, neural dynamic techniques so they can be uh, quite nice little adjuncts to, to treating but the problem is with 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 dizziness like this is there's no definite test for it there's no definitive test so diagnosis is basically a diagnosis of exclusion and we, uh, we need to exclude other reasons for dizziness before we can start maybe coming on using some of these treatments to any any good effect and as we said there are many other causes of dizziness it could be vestibular it could be neurological and, it, and it's often quite complicated so how, how we would look at it we need to carry out these tests only if we're qualified to do them and if you get somebody that's coming in with the dizziness and it's that kind of the room is swirling around and they're basically able to hold on to something it's pretty unlikely it's going to be a cervical element although it could be uh, you should really refer them on to a, a, a ear nose and throat doctor or a, a vestibular physiotherapist or people that are trained in it so they know what they're doing it's, it's important to do that normally cervical genic dizziness sort of presents with this kind of disequilibrium this they're feeling a bit unsteady on their feet they often will have 
cervical pain, uh, a sort of decreased cervical motion, and it will be aggravated with um, sort of head movement. They have a stiff neck often and a headache. But other forms of dizziness can cause that. Because imagine if you've got a, a vestibular problem going on in your inner ear, you're not going to be moving your head because it makes you want to throw up and you can't, you can't move. So you, you lock your neck and any of the things I've just mentioned, whether it be trigger points, decreased motion, aggravation with the head movement, a stiff neck, these headaches, they will occur because of a vestibular problem. Now you could treat those and you would get an element of um, relief, but it may not be enough. Uh, it may not be enough uh, to treat the trigger points and the patient's still getting a lot of dizziness as a result of it. So when you do treat people, if they're coming in and they're complaining, they're still complaining, send them off for a proper checkup with a uh, in nails and throat doctor or a vestibular therapist. Uh, one should consider the history and, and the, the, the uh, uh, obvious objective factors and look at any sort of red flags. Certainly if they've got anything like diplopia, dysarthria, seen double or unable to speak, numbness around their mouth, they're not able to speak or they've got nystagmus, straight away get them to see a, a medical profession is very, very important. Consider that they may have problems, uh, cardiovascular problems, problems with their blood pressure, sort of a, a high, high cholesterol and things like that. And they may be a cause of some of these things. Their treatment history could include um, migraines, tinnitus, this ringing in the ears or this sort of fullness of the ears or even hearing loss. And those sort of symptoms are, are less likely to be because of cervical genital dizziness, more to do with um, uh, a sort of a vestibular or a neural element, uh, especially if they've got things like uh, uh, oscilloscopia or something like that. But basically, the jumping and jiggling of the vision uh, that could be a result of medicines or or actually a neural neural problems. Any sort of symptoms that are exacerbated by by exertion and positional changes, uh, specific activities or environments, they could have a connection to cervical genodizziness, but they could also have a res be a result of, uh, of vertical or, or vestibular problems. So you need to consider the nature and the duration of it. The duration of cervical genital dizziness can range from days to months with episodes lasting for hours, whereas vertical BPPV can last for a few minutes to several minutes, but it's very, very severe. Uh, labyrinthian problems can involve over a number of days. So you need to look at those uh, um, symptoms, the disequilibrium that you get with cervical genital dizziness and some of those things I said were changes in spine position uh, often involved sort of a cervical pain that can give you an idea of what's going on and, and whether to re-refer or, or to try and treat. Sometimes it may be worth treating uh, before you re-refer, but certainly if they're coming in with this gravity-linked dizziness that, um, with nystagmus and simply everything moving around, uh, it's very, very debilitating when they change their head of movement, send them off immediately, and, and it's probably not worth uh, playing around and, and getting involved in that. Certainly if they've got any sort of... Uh, ear problems, uh, you should, you, you should uh, re-refer. Problems such as accidents and trauma will often present whiplash injury. If they've had radiographic investigations done um, to clear certain things and they're presenting with this sort of neck pain, lack of leg movement, then it may be okay to go on. But if you're getting people sort of over the age of 65 the the mechanism of an accident was a dangerous fall or something onto the head or a high-speed accident where the car rolled over and there's any sort of parastomatis they must be re-referred for sort of uh, for uh, x-rays so that they can have uh, any sort of problems of cervical or severe cervical instability uh, uh, cleared and bear in mind we've got 
cervical genic di uh, dizziness, but we can also have whiplash associated dizziness, but we need to be clear that that is okay and um, there's not going to be a problem because there could be sort of a, a fracture somewhere that we don't know about and we need to, to be aware of that. So looking at all these various things, we, we can then carry on and treat it and, and look into how we're going to treat it. We, if we've got the all clear and we're okay and we're happy with it not being vestibular and not something we can treat, we can check the cervical range of movement, their, their balance, and we can palpate the joints themselves. I mean, this is a lumbar spine, but I don't put it on the head like that. That could be a cervical spine except for the joints. You can palpate around the joints. Sometimes, certainly when you're at the base of the skull, uh, you're going to have a, quite an effect on, on, on those... Um, uh, on dizziness there uh, palpation postural alignment of the of the skull over the neck and the shoulders uh, any of those things can be looked into and maybe then addressed with our treatment regimes so bear these things in mind there are tests there is one test where you can basically get a patient and you hold his head and then you you sit them in a swivel chair and basically they swivel uh and you're holding their head and if the sort of dizziness comes there's a likelihood that it's a cervical genital dizziness because you're holding their head um, and you can also sort of check with other things by moving their head um, and 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 seeing what's happening with the body but again that's probably left for people that are more expert in it because if you do get a sudden attack and it is a vestibular nature um, you want to know how to treat that Basically, in d dizziness, even if you suspect any sort of cervical, uh, cervical genic dizziness as being the problem, you, you have to rule out any of the red flags that we mentioned earlier on. Check that there aren't any cardiovascular problems, neurological problems, trauma-related problems, as we were talking about, whip whiplash uh, associated disorders, cervical instabilities or vestibular involvement. And then one can go on and assess in a little bit more detail. You may wonder, after having checked that these criteria have met, check the uh, cervical range of movement. So I just get you to lift your head up, and look down, turn your head from side to side, turn your head from side to side, and from take it from side to side. Obviously, if there's any sort of limitation, restriction in these movement, that could sort of in indicate some uh, joint involvement from the from the neck. You can palpate the uh, various. Uh, joints as much as you can and feel for sort of muscular discrepancies or dysfunction such as trigger points if you can feel them look for postural alignment such as chin pokes if I just get you to take your chin forward like that and pull your chin back so things like that just have a look at a sort of postural alignment and then we can go on to the uh, cervical neck torsion test that sounds pretty uh, aggressive type of test but it really isn't basically the uh, patient is sitting in a swivel chair so I'll just show you he's in a swivel chair and what we're going to do is the clinician is going to come along now for the sake of uh, of this vlog ordinarily I would be standing in this sort of position right in front of the patient but uh, I'm looking for nystagmus what I'm going to do I'll show you it here I will stabilize the head and the patient will turn to the left I know I will hold the head, not letting it move, but I, I would be standing in front of him looking to see if there's any nystagmus eye movement. He will hold that for 30 seconds, and then he will return to the central position, again for 30 seconds, and again in the opposite direction, again for 30 seconds, and return. So obviously I'm in this position going to be standing here and holding the patient's head. Now, there is another version of that which is the head uh, head neck differentiation test which we shall come on to in a second but if there's any sort of nystagmus eye movement whereby the eyes are flicking from side to side uh, for more than a couple of seconds and it is observed in any of the various positions it could well be a cervical genic dizziness sort of problem the head neck, neck differentiation test again the patient is in the in the swivel chair um, and the main difference is, is that the, the clinician is going to, or the, the chair is going to be rotated, one as we just did for the cervical torsion test, whereby the head is kind of stabilised and not moving, 
and then again when the uh, uh, the head is not stabilized so basically what will happen is the um, head will be stabilized again I will stabilize here and you will rotate to the side and back and back again and return and then I can just do it now you need to make sure that the patient's head it's going to stay in, in the same sort of position without moving the head. And this is now basically moving um, the, the whole of the body and possibly the vestibular apparatus. And so that could indicate there's some sort of vestibular component in there. And if there's dizziness in both scenarios, both when the head is rotated and um, when the body is rotated, then the... Uh, then it's very likely that the, the problem could be from both cervical genic dizziness or, or, uh, and um, uh, vestibular problems. Quite often if we just get the, the patient to move their head from side to side and they um, so there's dizziness, again, that could again be, be both things, but it may indicate more towards a sort of a vestibular problem that needs to be ruled out prior to the, um, these tests by somebody that's qualified because once somebody is set off it can be pretty uncomfortable. Having elicited dizziness you can then go on to try and treat. Often cervical genital dizziness responds well to uh, manual treatments with uh, stability exercises, stretching, postural re-education, joint mobilization, trigger points and neural dynamics as I've said. One thing that is quite useful often when a patient gets up um, and suddenly stands up they will get a form of dizziness and this is like a vasovagal reaction and one one way that we can try and eliminate this is uh, when a patient is lying down and comes into and comes into the sitting position we tell them to take three deep breaths really deep breath really deep breaths again and relax and then get them to stand up doing the same thing but uh, we won't do that now. Um, and there's often this sort of vacuum pulling of the, the blood up towards the heart uh, uh, relieves some of this sort of dizziness that's caused by the sudden decrease in blood pressure. So these are some of the, the basic, very simple tests. Obviously, you need to be aware that there could be other vestibular or other problems uh, that may need to be re-referred. And uh, one needs to be very careful with them.